It is uh, a true pleasure to stand here this morning and uh, talk to all of you about uh, bringing this manhunt to successful conclusion and without getting anyone else hurt, most importantly. None of this would be possible without the support of this team represented by uh, members of various agencies standing with us up here, by others standing throughout this fire hall, and by still more who are out there in the field. So let me give you a few details about how this unfolded. As you know, we have been uh, working most recently in a, a perimeter established in northern Chester County. Last night, shortly after midnight, a series of events started to unfold. First, we, uh, we had a uh, burglar alarm at a residence near Prizer Road within the perimeter. Uh, our people investigated that, did not, uh, did not find Cavalcante there or anyone else, but it brought, it started to bring some of our people into that area. Uh, we had been searching an area not far from there already with some tactical teams that night. There was uh, an aircraft overhead utilizing uh, FLIR technology and uh, close to 1 a.m. picked up a heat signal that they began to track. It was west of PA 100 and north of Prizer Road. Tactical teams began to converge on that location where the heat source was moving. Uh, unfortunately, we had a weather system that also came in and we had lightning that was flashing all around and it caused the aircraft to have to depart the area. Tactical teams made a decision to uh, secure that area, that smaller area as best they could and hold it through the storm and until uh, we could bring additional resources in and bring aircraft back overhead to ensure that we did not have uh, an issue with an escape. That resumed early this morning, and shortly after 8 a.m., tactical teams converged on the area where the uh, heat source was. They were able to move in very quietly. They had the element of surprise. Cavalcante did not realize he was surrounded until that had occurred. That did not stop him from trying to escape. He began to crawl through thick underbrush, taking his rifle with him as he went. One of the Customs and Border Control teams, BORTAC, uh, had a dog with them. They released the dog. Some of our PSP CERT members were also there, had him surrounded. The dog sub subdued him, and team members from both of those teams immediately moved in. He continued to resist, but was uh, forcibly taken into custody. No one was injured as a result of that. Excuse me. He did sustain uh, a minor bite wound. Uh, we had uh, medical uh, personnel at the scene and they, uh, they took a look at that. Cavalcante was, as I said, taken into custody. He was transported to our Avondale station for further processing and interview. And he will ultimately be transferred to a state correctional institute where he will be housed and begin to serve his life sentence. With the uh, helicopter overboard, we saw the arrest taking place. There was some criticism about the photo op that was taken with the fugitive. Can you explain how that's actually a standard procedure or what's the reasoning behind the photo op with the fugitive? Uh, you know, I'm aware that there was a photo op that was uh, taken out there. Those uh, men and women worked amazingly hard through some very trying circumstances. They're proud of their work. I'm not bothered at all by the fact that they uh, took a photograph with him in custody. Again, they're proud of their work. They kept the community safe. Uh, I say thanks to them and good job. Well, was it appropriate? Sir, did he say anything in the moment that he was captured and you released the name of the canine officer who fit him during his capture? Uh, we will probably not be releasing uh, the name. Uh, and in terms of anything that he said, uh, we, we need to use an interpreter. And he has been taken back to the station. And, and at that point, uh, we will attempt to interview him at the Avondale. So he, he didn't say anything upon capture, anything at all? Uh, I'm not aware of it. Uh, if he did, uh, I, I don't have that information. Which one made the arrest? 
Your officers were authorized to use lethal force if he didn't actively surrender. Was the goal to always take him in alive? That's always our first uh, first choice and preference. Uh, again, that option is only to prevent the escape of a very dangerous individual. Had they not been able to contain him, that would have remained an option. Who specifically made the arrest? Which organization? It was a combination. It was a combined group of uh, the Border Patrol and PSP. Captured. When he went into the van, he was stripped and had his uh, tattoos photographed. Is that normal procedure? Yes. When the normal procedure happened at 1 o'clock, was he the same location where you found him? Wait, I'm sorry. You, you'd ask first. Thank you. What PSD? What did you follow uh, He was proned out. Uh, I, I'm not, uh, I've not been told that he was asleep. I'm told that he was proned out trying to hide and then began to crawl away. Was it the same location when you got the thermal imaging at 1 and you found him at 8? It was in that. Uh, Close proximity for that, yes. What was he saying that anyone else helping him? No one was uh, assisting him at that point. Sir, what was the agency that was flying the helicopter that first uh, spotted the heat? Uh, that was the DEA, and that was a fixed wing aircraft. Were you worried as, as law enforcement that you had to down the plane and there could be another chance for escape? I mean, that's obviously the plane had to land, but what kind of risk did that? Did you have to calculate with that? Well, you know, as I've told you throughout this investigation, there are always things we have to contend with. Everything isn't scripted and doesn't go perfectly. And so it's just another challenge. Uh, worried, I don't think, is the word that I would use. Uh, we simply had to adapt. And so we secured that inner perimeter while always keeping our outer perimeter secure so that if he did manage to get out of that inner, we would box him in yet again. How tough, how tough an adversary was he? You've led some very high profile and difficult manhunts. How tough an adversary was he compared to some of the others? You know, I, I don't know that he was particularly skilled. He was desperate, and I've said that all along. You have an individual whose choice is go back to prison and spend the rest of your life in a place you don't want to be or continue to try and, and evade capture. He chose the evade capture. Um, he was in good shape, obviously uh, able to climb, as you saw, to get out of prison, but, uh, but ultimately, uh, as I said all along, we had an amazing team assembled here, capabilities that are just very formidable, and, uh, and I was confident all along that he would eventually be captured, and, and ultimately this team, and I credit all of them uh, for bringing together their collective experience, the resources, and being able to apply that and, and capture him. It's never easy to find someone who doesn't want to be found in a very large area. Sir, there was uh, previously you said you were reserving comment of, on if anybody was helping him throughout the search. I know you said no one helped him this morning. Can you say now that he's in custody whether he received help the last 13 days? Uh, there were people who were intent and intended to assist him. We had been successful, uh, to the best of my knowledge, we had been successful in preventing that assistance from reaching him. Is that your sister? Yes. There had been some frustration, some criticism from the public as this was stretching on. Now that it's over, do you consider this anything other than a success? No, it was absolutely a success. And I got to tell you, I think uh, by and large, the public stayed amazingly supportive. I had uh, some third grade students stop by yesterday and drop off letters and notes of support for all of these uh, responders. We put them out for, for them to see at uh, briefing time and things. <laughs> That's the kind of support we saw from this community. There will always be criticism. There will always be people who think they can do this job better, and, and they're entitled to that opinion. Uh, what I would tell you is, again, I put my faith in this group of experts, this group of seasoned law enforcement professionals, the dedicated men and women, not only of the Pennsylvania State Police, but of all of the other partner agencies who went out there every day. I'll put my money on them any day of the week. And, and I believe the community supported them and continues to. Will you know the charge with escape, and when will those charges be filed? We'll be discussing with the district attorney what, if any, charges uh, uh, will be filed. But uh, for right now, again, there is a commitment, and he is going to begin serving his life sentence at a state correctional institution. What, what is his sister now? Uh, she is in the uh, deportation proceedings. That will proceed as had been initiated. Are you Other than the right, Kavakante got the Eagles. Yeah. But, I'm sorry. Uh, you know where Kavakante got the Eagles hoodie from? I do not. Other than the uh, the rifle, what did he have with him? Did he have anything else? Uh, just the clothing and things that he was wearing. Did he attempt yeah. to shoot? Did he attempt to try to, to engage? He did not have an opportunity to. No, How many sir. officers were on the ground? 
Uh, I don't have an exact number, but uh, looking at the teams we were sending in there in the immediate vicinity was probably uh, 20 to 25. Yes, they were tactical. They were a tactical team. You would expect uh, camouflage, uh, full armor, uh, long rifles. And which agency? Customs and Border Patrol is their BORTAC team out of El Paso, and then Pennsylvania State Police CERT. It's our special emergency response team. Once on the ground, once on the ground, uh, from they they've now pinpointed them, right? They're on the ground and they're quietly moving in place. Length of time. Uh, from that point, uh, probably five minutes, it played out fairly quickly uh, once they had identified him and moved in. He detected uh, uh, them at that point once they were already in position, and again, he started to crawl away, and it played out very quickly then. Sir, what is your greatest lesson from this 14-day uh, manhunt? You know, I, I don't know that there's any single lesson. I will tell you that I learned something from all of these, and, and, and as I told you before, I bring that experience to the next one. and so. Um, I just go back to it's all about the team. It's about assembling the right group of people, the right technology, uh, the, the people with can-do attitudes who will stick with you through the investigation. And that's what we did. Uh, and it's worked well for us in the past, and I'm sure will work well for us in the future. You, you said there were people intending to help him. I just want to see if we can get a little more detail from you on that. You, you did mention you did confirm the sister was intending to help him. Who else might have been intending to help him? And can you give us any detail uh, and, on how? And, how and they the reason I'm not going to talk about that again, as I mentioned, we will be discussing with the, the district attorney whether there will be any additional charges. Uh, I don't expect that there will be on that aspect, but we want to have that discussion uh, before we, uh, before we disclose we anything else. No, I, I think he stopped because his, his uh, normal uh, pattern was to travel in the late evening, early or overnight hours. Uh, whether he got tired or whatever, normally he typically didn't travel then later at night, and he typically did not travel during the day unless we pushed him. And uh, we did have several instances of that where he was pushed and had to move. But, uh, you know, he doesn't have night vision or anything like that, the type of technology that many of our operators had out there. And so uh, traversing rugged terrain is difficult to do. Uh, I, I believe uh, it was just easier for him to do in the uh, late evening hours and Did late afternoon. Is that also the dog bite? Uh, I believe that's, uh, that's what caused it. It was a scalp wound, and, and uh, they believe pretty significantly. I'm told there was not a significant injury. Did he have a phone? No, I mean, all along, you know, we asked people to secure as best they could. Uh, unfortunately, uh, he was still able to acquire some of those things. Again, those are just some of the challenges we deal with in, in an investigation like this. Uh, our people rise to those challenges, and, and ultimately, uh, again, he was Lieutenant captured. I know that uh, you led the effort also uh, in July earlier this year when that uh, person escaped using bed sheets. It was a chocolate lab that ultimately led to his arrest, and now here we are again. You're talking about a canine moving in and basically disabling Cabo Conte. Can you just kind of talk about the, the having canines and their use and how much of an asset they are when you're trying to navigate these tough terrain and, and, and track down dangerous people? Sure. I mean, in the case of Trucker, or Tucker, he was kind of a civilian. Uh, I would say we deputized, uh, yeah, and brought him in. Uh, uh, he's now an honorary member of PSP. But uh, uh, lab. Uh, but he was not involved in this. That was in Warren that uh, this gentleman what was referring to. Was Just, the dog in this case? Uh, you know, I, I, I believe it was a shepherd or a um, Belgian, Mal Belgian Malinois. Uh, just one minute, if I can come back to this gentleman, I, I apologize. Uh, in any event, uh, canines pay, play a very important role, not only for tracking, but also for, um, just like in, in a circumstance like this, safely capturing someone. Far better that we're able to release a, a patrol dog like this and have them subdue the individual than have to use lethal force. And so uh, again, our preference is always to use other means Canines play a very important role. Did, can you give us? Uh, 
He was in the wooded area, again, west of, west of PA 100 there. PA 100. Are you aware of how he was getting nourishment and, you know, liquids? No, that will all be part of the interview we'll attempt to do. Uh, whether he'll talk to us or not, that's uh, obviously entirely up to him. But, uh, but that will be something that, uh, that we'll be asking. Sir, at this juncture, do you release where he worked in Tulsa County prior to his 2021 arrest for homicide? Uh, I, unfortunately, I don't have that, uh, the list of those locations. I know that he did uh, a variety of jobs installing flooring. But, uh, but I don't have the specific list of locations. Can you give us, of, can of you give us more? How long will he be at the Avondale Barracks? Uh, long enough for us to process him and however long a, uh, an interview lasts with him. Uh, I don't expect it to be for a very extended period of time. And, and again, at that point, he'll be transported to an SCI. And what, what Sir, is there any concern that he would team up with another small man to step inside the trench coat, little rascal style? No. Yes, Can you give us more detail on, on the actual encounter with the dog? <laughs> Did the dog tackle him, bite him? Can, I mean, the uh, you know, again, I didn't see the uh, this specific capture. What I would tell you is the way those dogs are trained is to simply um, uh, go to the person. They will uh, grab whatever is closest for them to grab, and then they are trained to detain that individual. They don't they don't just keep biting and releasing or trying to cause additional injury. They simply um, uh, grab onto and try and hold that person in place until officers can get there. So that's why they're never released, uh, you know, at some great distance or unsupervised. Uh, there are officers close by who can then move in. The handler can immediately pull the dog back off of the, uh, they give did, him a command, pull the dog back off, and then officers did, take Did he over. fight the dog? Did he resist the dog? He did. He did. He did. Uh, I don't have the name. Two questions with, with, was there any body cam footage or doggy cam footage in the situation of him getting the, the rest of anything happening? Not that I'm aware of. And then secondly, Border Patrol, is, are they here to speak? Yes. Can we talk about the, the expertise of Border Patrol being here to to make that arrest? What 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 your experience played and how that made a, if you could step up? Sure. Now, Border Patrol is trained in tracking and pursuing. From the time a, an agent comes on duty, assigned to the south, southwest border, they get lots of experience tracking and trailing people. And then with our, our technology and other resources, it just aids in the, the searches like uh, this this one. Different terrain than, than normally what you're working with, correct? So Border Patrol is assigned to both the northern border and the southwest border. So. We got training and experience in all types of terrain. Can you just tell us specifically what you did here? What did you do here to capture this map? We assisted uh, the state and federal, state and local partners with our resources, whether performing uh, observation at night, um, search searches during the day, searches during night, and then obviously we had our uh, our tactical teams here. Question for Governor Shapiro, if you might. Governor, yesterday you described just not 24 hours ago, right here, that you were calm and that your commanders over this operation were also calm. Uh, in hindsight, how did you balance the obvious pressures from outside that were forever saying, find him yesterday? Look, we had a job to do, and that was to capture Cavalcante. And I had the absolute best team working on this. I'm proud to be associated with the Pennsylvania State Police and all the law enforcement uh, leaders who were behind me, federal state and local. We knew we had the best, and we knew, as Colonel Bivens said multiple times, he was desperate and it was just a matter of time. Uh, I couldn't be more proud of them. And I want to come back to two questions over here that are related uh, to Mr. Holden's question. Um, one was about the assets that we deployed beyond the people. I hope that the public takes great pride in the technology, in the canines, uh, and in all of the assets that were brought to bear here. We ask a lot of the public through their tax dollars to support the police, to support law enforcement at every level. And they got a front row seat here in Chester County and across Pennsylvania to see the extraordinary work not only these individuals do, but the great technology we're able to bring to bear to ultimately capture um, dangerous suspects like this. The public should take great pride in that. And then to the gentleman's question there in the suit, um, 
Folks, whoever had their Eagles hoodie stolen, if you could let us know, I'll do my best to get you one of those new Kelly Green ones, okay? Governor, can I just ask you, two escapes, uh, two different individuals from the same prison in the same year. What do you say to people who live in this area who say, what is happening at the Chester County Prison and what are you guys going to do moving forward to try and prevent this kind of thing from ever happening again? Here in Pennsylvania, our system may be a little different from other states. We have state correctional institutions and then we have county jails. In this case, the Chester County Jail um, is run by Chester County officials. They'll answer uh, those questions as to what occurred and what changes are ultimately gonna be made. Certainly, the State Department of Corrections will be here to assist um, in any reviews or in any other work that they need done to make sure that that facility is secured. They obviously have a lot of work to do there, um, and I'm confident on the leadership of uh, Chairwoman Moskowitz and, uh, and District Attorney Ryan and other leaders in the county, they'll get that done. Can you put a dollar figure on the search? How much did this cost? The, is it estimated that the cost of the manhunt is about a million a day? I, I can't. Um, you know, put a price tag on it. We'll do our best to make sure that whatever can be tallied up is and is shared with the public. At the state level, I can't speak for our local or federal partners. Governor, you mentioned, you, mentioned, you mentioned the pattern of, of what time of day he was running. Were there any other patterns that you picked up on that were key in, in, in tracking him to the uh, there, were, there were a number of things that, um, that we picked up on. And, uh, it, it, he didn't follow the same pattern every single time. Um, seemed to like to travel uh, via creek beds. He liked other paths of less resistance, wood lines, power lines, gas lines, that type of thing. And that's actually fairly normal. Um, nobody wants to have to uh, uh, force their way through very heavy underbrush and things. Uh, and, and again, I mentioned the time of day but, uh, but all of that, combined with some outstanding work and technology, is really what, uh, what brought this to a Mr. So many people in Chester County are grateful for your efforts. I know you mentioned on Friday you were asked about containment and capture. Ultimately, that tactic was successful. Anyone that you would like to thank at this time, I know Land Hope donated breakfast yesterday. Wawa has been big help with lunch. Any small businesses you'd like to thank, and then again, the people of Chester County. I will tell you that uh, we have been compiling a list, and I don't want to stand here right now because I will absolutely miss many. Um, some of those that you mentioned uh, have been outstanding supporters of us, and I thank them. Uh, we will publish a list of all um, who, who helped us out because we are very, very appreciative. That level of support is really one of the things that allows our people to focus on the task at hand and, and to okay. you know try and be successful even quicker than we might otherwise have to be. When I gave you all a tour of the facility in here, you know, I talked a lot about logistics and the support that's required to field a team of three, four, five or more hundred law enforcement officers out there. Uh, it, it takes a lot to, to put it out there. And so the help of all of those folks, the help of the average person who stopped by and dropped off a case of water was very much appreciated, not only for the case of water, but also just for the kind thoughts of, uh, and words of support that they always included when they dropped And ultimately, contained and captured through that tactic was the way to go. Yes, as I said, uh, we always take a multifaceted approach, and so depending on the circumstances, there's always a contingency, and we're always prepared to move in whatever direction we need to. Is Kamikaze being taken to? I'm sorry. I don't believe any officers uh, on the tactical teams have money. Is there any sort of aircraft involved here um, with the heat um, seeking escaping? Is that a TPA um, aircraft or is it plainly drawn helicopter? Also, did the arrest happen in South Covington Township? It was a DEA fixed wing aircraft. I believe that's South Covington. I would have to look at a map. We were operating in several townships there, but again, it was north of Prizer and west of PA 100. Sir, where were you when this all happened? And do you have a personal feeling of satisfaction for 14 days of very long, hard work? How does this feel for you this morning? I was here in the command post when the capture occurred. And uh, uh, yes, I'm, 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 I'm very uh, happy that this occurred and that no one was injured. You know, it brought a new level of danger for all of our people out here in the field when we knew that he obtained a firearm. And so uh, for me, 
the biggest sense of relief is that no one in the community was harmed and no law enforcement officer was harmed either. So that's, that's really, that's the win. Sir, what more presidency? No, I believe he was more mobile the entire time. Sir, what prison is he being transported to? We're not releasing that, uh, but it is going to be a state correctional uh, facility, and once uh, he is secure there, I believe uh, they will release uh, where he is being housed. Well, Senator Curl, you said that multiple people have attempted, attempted to help him. He had any means of communication to reach out to those people and coordinate with them as to where he was? Uh, he did not at the time that he had been captured. Well, as I addressed uh, a few minutes ago, yes, he had the firearm with him. Yes, he was a threat. He did not have an opportunity. I believe he was uh, taken by surprise, and I believe the canine played a large role in him not being able to utilize that firearm. What I would tell you is, again, that it is our last choice, our last preference to use lethal force. And so while there were other options, the team did the responsible thing did what they're trained and what we expect, and they used other options. And again, lethal force is always their last option. Can you still answer questioning, what kinds of information yes. are you okay. trying to get to him, like what kinds of questions are you asking him? Uh, I, you know, uh, we have the criminal investigators that have been involved in this, everything from the escape up through the time that, uh, that he has been on the run. I'm sure all of that will be uh, included in their list of questions, whether he'll choose to talk I have no idea, and, uh, and that will be his choice. Can you assure and guarantee the public that this man will not escape again because clearly he has the ability to do that? Can you say that now? I can assure you he will not escape while he is in our custody. He will be turned over a state correctional institution. I have every confidence that they will be able to safely and securely house him as well. Lieutenant Colonel, was he in the perimeter of the, the perimeter that you had outlined yesterday? Was that he true? was. He was. Yes, sir. How close to the edge of the perimeter was he? Or was he you know, where? Within the perimeter? Uh, it was within the perimeter, and he would have been within a few hundred yards of the eastern edge of the perimeter. Colonel, in terms of the public being involved, there was uh, videos surfacing of uh, vigilantes in Chester County trying to get involved in this case. Uh, moving forward, if something like this happens again, what would you tell the public in regard to getting involved in a case like this? I would ask them the same thing that I asked this time, and that is please don't come out and try to become involved like that. You take away, you potentially take away resources that would otherwise be spent on the search trying to deal with those individuals, and we don't want one of them to get hurt unintentionally. How far was the capture from where the burglary happened last night? Uh, within a quarter mile. It wasn't. It wasn't a burglary. It was an alarm, by the way. But uh, oh. what's process? Any idea the ballpark time until transfer? Uh, it depends on whether he is cooperative and is interviewed. That could take minutes to hours, but uh, I, I don't have the answer uh, yet. Whether Does he have a lawyer? Do you know? Uh, I'm not aware of that. Sir, do we know if his sister and mother entered the country via Puerto Rico as well? I don't believe his mother is here. Okay. And uh, I don't have that information immediately available here about where they entered. As I said, uh, his sister, though, is in the process of being deported now. Do we have time for two more questions? Yeah. Mr. Colonel, after everything that you've been through, seen with Cavalcante, once that interpreter is there, do you plan on having a conversation with him, asking him anything about all this? No. The, uh, the investigators are quite confident. Uh, they'll gather the information that uh, we believe is important if they're able to. and. Uh, uh, I'm confident that, uh, uh, that everything we need will be gathered in that way. There's no reason for me to have a personal discussion. With What's your message to anybody else who tried to escape? Well, I think it's a very bad idea, obviously, uh, and and we will be here should something like this occur again. We'll put the team back together, and we'll be right back out after them.